This is Code.org, and this is an awesome fighting game I made with a dice. Let me show you how it works. Hit run here. Okay, so right now I'm the wizard. I'm going to go ahead and click on the dice. And it's going to randomize with color effect. I know, impressive. And here's my roll. So this roll then is going to be uh, taken from the centaur once I end my turn. Okay? And now it's the centaur's turn. And ta -da! And that's the damage that's going to be done um, against the wizard once it figures it out in turn. Right? And there's a ton of stuff we can add. We can add bonus health. We can add special moves. We can add two dice, three dice. Um, and there's a lot of different games you could base, you could make off a model like this. Uh, which is part of the reason I built it. I'm going to walk you through the code I have um, and then also show you a very fancy version which you should check out too. The code that I have though and this program is posted below in the description. There's a link to it and all of the code. You should check it out, play it yourself, build on it, make something really really awesome and then make sure to post it in the comments because I'd love to see all that you can create with it. But there's a bunch you can do with the dice so let's dive in. All right, right off the bat, I have global variables, dice, total, health one, right? So that's player one. And if I hit reset, you can see health one and health two over here, okay? And to show you how complicated this can get, I'm going to go ahead. Blah, and Whoops, wrong way. There we are. Here's another game that I'm building and have a tutorial on. So if I hit run on this, this one's far more complicated, but attack. And we have some debugging stuff here that I've been working on. And here's my wizard's roll. I'm going to hit end. And now this is a werewolf character I'm making. And hit attack on my werewolf. Right? And we can make this fairly sophisticated pretty quickly. And I'm still not done with this. They're going to have special moves available to them. Rolling once or twice or defending. Things like that. Let's take a look back at ours though. Alright. So. Here we are. Now, once we have these variables, health two, player, player one turn, this is how I keep track if it's the wizard's turn or the centaur's turn, and then turn over. And you'll see what all these are doing in just a sec. So on event, on the event that the die, right, because a single dice is, well, a die, is clicked, what happens? Well, when the person clicks it, turn over if turnover equals true. The reason I have this is I'm confirming that it's not already spinning. If our dice is already rolling, we don't want to make it go again. So first I check if turnover is true, and it should be when we first start. Then I set turnover to false, because I don't want someone to click on a dice twice and make it spin again right away. So turnover, this variable is equal to false, and as a global variable I can access it. And then I say roll dice. Where's that function? Right here. Okay, roll dice has a cool, a few cool things. Uh, random is going to be set to zero, count's going to be zero. And I'll show you why I'm using that. Time loop runs every 600 milliseconds. So when I hit run here and I click on my dice, okay, 600 milliseconds is how fast you're seeing it. So about every half a second it spins, right? It lets you roll. Each time the color changes, that's ha roughly half a second. It's six tenths of a second. Okay, so now random is going to be set to equal a random number, 0 to 5. Why 0 to 5? Look at this. ta -da! These are um, alt keys, uh, alt codes, and it's on the keyboard you can look up alt codes for dice, or you can copy and paste these in the description. I have an array up here of my dice, and it is my random number is 0 through 6, because there are 6 sides to our dice, and Arrays, which are weird, start at zero, right? So arrays, the very first index of an array is zero. So when we're counting our array, this is zero, one, two, three, four, five. Meaning five is actually six here, zero is actually one, okay? And that's why my random number is zero through five, because I get this random number, and then I say set property die, which is this guy, right? And it is text, because this is an alt code. It's how I got the dice. It is text. So I used a label to make this. Where's our labels? Yep, that's a label. Okay, most of this stuff is labels. That's a button. And then an image icon. 
So now once I have that, I set the dice text to dice random. So random is a number between zero and five. So it's going to be one of these, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, five. So I set it randomly. I then randomly generate our color, right? Because our colors are changing. And how I'm doing that is using red, green, blue, right? So the red, green, blue method, you have zero to 255 pixel, you can think, in a way, pigment. So at zero, there would be no red. If red was equal to zero, there's no red in that color. If red's equal to 255, it's max red. If red's 255 and this is zero and this is zero, the other colors, it's only red. If green's 255 and this is zero and that's in zero, it's only green, right? So what I did is I randomized zero to 255 each color, and then I set them up right here. So let's set property of the dice, the text color, because remember this is technically text, to this color. Then the game screen, I did the same thing, except I didn't want it to be the exact same color. So if you want to see something that's kind of cool, it will still kind of be in the palette, the family, if you mix these up. So even though this is red, green, and blue, I just moved them around because it will have similar numbers to up here, but mixed up. 0 0.3 means that the background I want to be 70% see-through. And that's just so it's not too dark and hides our other stuff. The wizard icon I set to be equal to the same red, green, blue as the dice. And that way they, whatever the icon is at the time, match. And I actually set both of the icons to match, right? It's just that one is always going to be hidden and one will be visible. So you, they're both changing colors. You just can't see it. Now, if random equals number, right? So if my random number up here is equal to another random number, why am I making it calculate a random number every time in this if statement? Because I don't want it to stop right away, right? I want it to loop through several times before it stops, because I want the player to see that, hey, the dice really is uh, spinning, right? It's or going. So if a random number happens to be equal to random 0 to 5, and so each time we get to this part of the code, it's going to check, and then it's going to create a new random number. And if it is, I don't know, 3, and it also happened to be 3 up here for this random number, then those are equal. But I also say, and count is greater than 3 because I want it to spin three times at least. So if count is greater than three and our random number made up here is equal to the new random number we just created here on the fly, then we drop down, we set property roll, text, random plus one. Why random plus one? Well, like I said earlier, random is going to be zero, one, two, three, four, five. So we want to add one because if our random number is zero, then the actual dice value is one. Or if our random number is three, the actual dice value is, well, four. So once we have that all set, um, it's going to then give the dice roll value. That's what we're setting there. And that lets the user know. It also confirms what they see. And once we do that, we're going to stop our dice loop. Okay, and that's what we're inside of this thing, right? Variable, I created a variable called equals dice loop. It's handy when you're using time loops. So I'm going to stop dice loop, set property, intern button hidden, false. So I'm no longer going to hide this intern button. And I'm going to set the intern button background color to be equal to basically to the colors that are up here, but I mix them around again. So it's just a bit related. So now it's the wizard's turn over here. I'm going to hit raw. And then finally, count plus plus. And that just adds one to count each time because I want to make sure that it, we count up how many times it's gone. Once it's gone three, we will let it stop. All right. So let's go ahead and go back up to here. Did we get to... Ah, there it is. Now, it's important to... Once we click on that in turn, that in turn button also triggers something. That's when, because I wanted to give the player time to see the numbers, see what they have before taking health away. So when I click in turn, that triggers my set damage function. What's set damage? It's way down here, and it's the math stuff. 
this looks complicated. It's not as bad as it looks, I promise. All right, so set damage. That variable role equals get property role text. So I'm just getting this number up here. Now, if player one equals equals true, right? Because player one is either going to be true or false. Player one turn is going to be true or false. So if it's true, that means it's player one's turn. If it's false, that means it's player two's turn. So first I'm going to check if player one is equal to true, that means player one attacked player two, attacked the centaur. So I am going to take the health two, which is this right here. Yep, health two. I'm going to say, okay, health two equals health two minus roll, right? And how I, health two is actually a variable up here that I'm using right now. So it wouldn't grab it from the screen. But health two equals health two minus my roll. I'm just going to space this out a bit. Which would be nuts. Okay. And then health two equals health two minus our roll. We're going to set player. So we're subtracting. We're taking that player's health and we're subtracting the roll we just did from it. Because the wizard just attacked. Now, player one's turn is now going to be equal false because it was true. It's false. It's no longer their turn. Set property wizard icon to hidden. True. Set property centaur icon to hidden. True or false. So we make it true that the wizard icon's hidden and we make it false that the um, centaur's horseshoe is hidden. So the centaur's horseshoe should become available, should pop up, and then, there we are, uh, the wizard's icon disappears on us. So now else, if player one equals true, do this. Else, so if not, that means it's not player one's turn, it's player two's. Health is going to be equal to health one. Health one equals health one. So if it's not player one's turn, that means the centaur just rolled and we need to take it away from player one's health. So health one minus roll. Player one now equals true. So now it would be player one turn. And remember, only one of these will execute. If it is player one's turn, if player one is true, the only code that's going to run is this. It will skip this else and then run code below it. If this is false, player one's turn is false. It's not player one's turn. It will skip this code, but then by default, always, 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 it will run the else and everything below it. All right. So then set icon hidden, and we're switching off those icons again. And then we are changing the background highlight of the player's name. Once we do all that, we say total equals total minus minus roll. I did this because it was getting confused because both of these are technically text right on the screen, not just numbers. So if I did total plus roll when I grabbed the information, it was trying to give me a big, long text string thing. So if I did two minuses here, like I did with the parentheses and stuff, it creates this total. And that's just this number. I thought it was cool to know how much damage, how much has been rolled during the game thus far. And then set property total. I update that, I update health, and I update the other health. Even though only one health will change each round, it's just easier to keep them updated. So, again, you can do a ton with this. You can turn it into racing games I've seen. A lot of dice-based games. So, I want to share it. I will post the code. Um, feel free to use it, make it your own, make something way better. Don't just copy and paste, right? That's still plagiarism. But, yeah, take a look at it, make something awesome, and make sure to post it below.